Hello Makers! Two years ago I watched Makers Muse do a review of the Zmorph 2SX and was instantly in awe at the possibilities that that machine could create due to its versatility. In comes the Zmorph VX. To call this beastly machine a 3D printer would just simply be doing it a disservice because it's capable of so much more. Now I've had the pleasure to test out most of the capabilities of this machine um, within the last few weeks. So today I'm gonna to give you my official review of what I think about the Zmorph VX. So stick around. As Maker's Muse had put it, the machine is built like an absolute tank. It is heavy as it's mostly built out of aluminum, it's sturdy, and it's hands down one of the best looking machines to ever sit foot in my office. It comes with dual linear rails and belts on the Y axis, a dual belt setup on the X axis, and dual motors on the Z axis along with heavy duty linear rods. It has a color touchscreen display which is extremely intuitive and very responsive. It has a removable heated glass build plate which can easily reach temperatures of 100 degrees Celsius in a few minutes. Now the bed doesn't have any special coating on it so using the provided a printer pro bed adhesive or magic goo is ideal. Now the build platform is also interchangeable in order to be able to swap it between a 3D printing bed and also a multifunction bed for the CNC and Laser Pro tool heads. Swapping out the bed is very easy as you just have one latch on one side and a couple of magnets on the other side. The 3D printing volume on the Zmor VX is 250 by 235 by 165 millimeters. It can take either 1.75 mm filament or you could choose to get the 2.85 mm filament tool head. You can also get a dual extruder single nozzle version of the 3D printing tool head, but that only comes in 1.75 mm filament variant. It is capable of printing almost any filament you throw at it thanks to its front and back covers which fully enclose the machine but are also completely removable thanks to their magnetic attachments. It has full automatic bed levelings thanks to a strain gauge that is installed within the X axis. As the nozzle moves towards the bed in three different points for several times over, it detects the pressure and adjusts the height accordingly. It then proceeds to uh, print several single extrusion lines on the bed so the user can simply choose which one is the ideal height. And that's it, you're set. Now the Zmor VX also has a closed loop stepper motor system. This means that the stepper motors always know where they are relative to the build plate. So it can instantly compensate for missteps should they occur. I inadvertently tested this feature out during a dual color print when I tried to use an Allen key to tighten the extruder grip on the filament while a print was ongoing. With the movement, the Allen key got caught with the Z-axis rods and the motor simply kept on skipping steps until it dislodged the Allen key. When the closed loop system detects missteps, it will also stop extruding momentarily until the movement of the printer resumes. The part cooling fan can also be removed or attached to the printing tool head thanks to its magnets. Thankfully, every time you start a print, the machine does remind you that PLA materials need to have the fan attached, which comes in very handy as I would have forgotten about it quite a few times. Last but not least, the machine also has a nicely lit red button, which is a hard reset. This may come in very handy as you venture into the CNC milling world initially. Now the main feature of this machine is the versatility and therefore the machine has a very easy swappable tool head system which involves one single screw to remove or tighten the tool head and cable connections on the frame for the tool head being used. It can be used to laser etch several types of material thanks to its Laser Pro tool head. It also has a CNC tool head which can also mill several types of material. Last but not least, a paste extruder is also available but unfortunately I couldn't test it this time around. The machine is also built in a way that is easy to clean and the electronics are completely sealed off from the chamber of the printer so you don't have to worry about dust and debris. 
As you will see, I've milled and drilled to my heart's content and then went back to 3D printing by simply using a vacuum cleaner to just clean out the chamber. All I had to do was just simply take out the sides and clean up the inside. Another thing I need to point out um, is that when it's 3D printing, the Zemo VX is actually really quiet. It's quiet enough to have it sit in an office next to you while printing without bothering you. Now the best way to take full advantage of the Zemors is to use their own slicer called Voxelizer. Um, while it is a completely new platform to me and took a while to get used to, it is perfectly suited for the machine itself as it incorporates all the machine's tool heads and capabilities perfectly. To be completely honest, the only difficulties I've had with it were getting used to the different terminology of some settings. Like for example, the transition setting for dual printing it's called Artifact and Voxelizer. And there are some other things like the additional settings like height multipliers and ratios, which could be confusing at first. But once you venture onto the Zmorph Academy online, which is available to anyone, you'll quickly learn all of that thanks to their extremely informative tutorials with videos. Now, the 3D printing aspect of the printer was very straightforward. Um, but me being me, I decided to jump into the deep end of the pool head first and print a Wexter model of Too Faced as my first test print. Surprisingly, the result was actually quite spectacular considering I still had no idea what I was doing in Voxelizer. The model was printed with Zmorph's own brand of silver PLA which came with the machine. It was printed around 0.15mm layer height and you can see that the consistency of the layers are on point so the finished print looked absolutely awesome. Following that I decided to install the Dual Head Pro tool head and try a multicolor print model with Voxelizer's own pattern tool. The idea is to set a three-tone grayscale image on the model and have the printer mix the colors to form a pattern on the model itself. Having the light and dark colors printing in each of the filament and the midtone printed in a mix of the two colors. I printed the same model once again, but this time at 50% scale, mainly because I really wanted to test the other features of the, of the machine and not get stuck just on the 3D printing aspect of it. The results were actually very satisfying as this feature gives a whole new edge to 3D printing. Now this method of 3D printing of course creates a sacrificial wall around the print or artifact in this case. However, the size of this can be adjusted through uh, the artifact settings in Voxelizer. Next was printing something with PVA soluble supports and for that I was confident enough to try out the Knotted Orbit by Emmet. Now the model printed beautifully several times. Now I say several times because I made quite a few mistakes during the preparation process which I didn't even notice. While the models printed, I noticed that every time I sunk the model in the water to dissolve the PVA, the model literally fell apart in my hand as I either lifted it out or cracked in my hands when I held it and I instantly thought it was under extrusion. After about three tries, I realized that the default settings for the artifact in Voxelizer software didn't allow for enough transition purge between the PVA and the PLA. So what was happening was that after purging to print the PLA, there was still some PVA left to purge and that mixed with the PLA in the model resulting in layers being printed in a mix of PLA and PVA, which is why the models were falling apart when I submerged them in water. So I went ahead and adjusted the transition to about 90mm just to be safe from the default 25mm and that's when I had success. I did a small test print to try out. Um, when I saw that it worked, I then went ahead and reprinted the knotted orbit once again and this time the result was absolutely perfect. It was then time to start doing the tutorials on the Zmorph Academy. Now the first tutorial is the 3D printed rocket by Zmorph. First involving the single color tool head, then the dual color tool head for the rocket exhaust. Then you are shown how to use the CNC tool head in order to cut out the plywood for the rocket stand. And finally the laser pro tool head in order to edge the plywood of the rocket stand base. I have to admit that the result was pretty epic and pretty much encompasses what the machine can do day in and day out. 
Following that, I spent some time testing out how to turn photos into images and then into laser etched items. I also tried my hand at using CNC mill on some acrylic, which was also a success. Finally, it was time for the advanced course on the Zmorph Academy, and this involves creating PCBs. Now, this required me to buy a few ingredients online. While the machine can easily mill out PCBs, Zmorph's tutorial actually takes a different style of approach and makes life a bit easier by instructing you to send down a PCB, spray on some matte black paint, then have the laser etch out the negative of the PCB. You then replace the Laser Pro tool head with the CNC tool head. You drill out the holes of the PCB and finally you mill out the final shape of the PCB itself. Now it took me a couple of tries to understand the process of alignment, but on the second try I did manage to nail it. The last step is to soak the PCB in a mixture of water and sodium persulfate for about an hour. Now this will eat away the exposed copper, leaving all the traces covered by the matte black paint intact. Then it's just a matter of getting some acetone and removing the paint, leaving you with a perfectly made PCB. Now doing PCBs this way rather than with a mill gives you much better tolerances as the width of the laser is usually around 0.12 millimeters. So you can set tracks to much more detail on the PCB itself. Now having tried all the tool heads that I had received with the machine, I wanted to do a project that shows the potential of this machine itself. I went online on Thingiverse and I found a project involving an electronic dice. Now I had done this a while back, um, but I, I wanted to sort of reinvent this. I All I wanted was the schematic of the PCB or the electronics in this case. I wanted the code for the dice and the idea itself. After I spent a few hours online learning how to make PCB schematics on uh, KiCad, I decided to start prototyping the PCB. Now, this needed some tweaking. I've never done PCBs before, um, but I wanted to try it out. So I went ahead and designed a PCB. I threw it on the Zmorph. Um, I laser etched the tracks on the PCB. I milled out the holes and the PCB itself. I went through the full process once again. I cleaned out the PCB and then I soldered all the components to it. Then I went on to Fusion 360 to design a case for it. After a few hours, the model was also designed and ready, so I decided to start printing a few prototypes in PLA to make sure that all the, uh, all the clearances are right, that everything fits as it should. I did some final adjustments, so I then decided to throw in a roll of ABS on the Zmorph to print the final version. Now for this project, ABS wasn't required, but I did want to use it because I did want to show that it is capable of printing an ABS and other high temperature materials. After the print was finished, I assembled everything and as planned, the machine had made a fully working prototype electronic dice completed with PCB and enclosure in just under 24 hours. And this shows what this machine is all about. It's a prototyping holy grail of a machine. Um, you, you think of something, you start designing, you start making, milling, cutting, printing, and you have your final prototype. Now, the machine will not be within everyone's reach. Um, unfortunately, the price for the base 3D printer model is 2,400 euros. And if you want all the tool heads to have a fully decked out prototyping machine, get ready to fork out over 3,800 euros for it. Now, personally, to be completely honest, while I have drooled on this machine for so long, I could never justify the cost even though I have spent more than that in the past on machines, but I never understood the whole purpose of spending that much money on one machine. But I do feel that this is the kind of machine that a serious maker should consider. Whether you are an individual, a school, a lab, this is the one machine you will need to produce any creative ideas you may have. And I can assure you it will not disappoint in any aspect of the prototyping process. 
Now this machine has been sent to me on loan by Zemor for the purpose of this review and a few other projects following that. So unfortunately I won't get to keep it. However, I do feel that I will be saving up to have a Zemorph in my shop as this is one of those machines that inspires you to learn and create. Two weeks ago I had no idea how to even start thinking about making PCBs. Now all I have is a list of all the projects I intend to make before the machine goes back. I have learned how to use KiKet for schematics, I have learned how to use Flatcam to produce Gerber files, and all this thanks to the creativeness that is inspired by the Zemorph VX. Now for those of you who have seen Maker Muse's review two years ago on the um, Zemorph 2SX, I would like to confirm that each and every single issue mentioned by Angus have been resolved in this machine, rightfully so, it's been two years, there was more than enough time. And to be completely honest, I don't think there is anything more I could ask from this machine. And I say that knowing how much it costs. If I had to nitpick, I'd say that a filament sensor and power zoom function would definitely be a plus. However, the print volume of the machine doesn't really get you into the risk of running out of filament as long as you have a rough idea of how much filament you have on the spool. Now, Voxelizer actually gives you a very accurate estimate when slicing models of how much material you're gonna use and the time it's gonna take to print it. As for the power zoom function, while I had a few power cuts during the knotted orbit print, I did have a UPS attached to the printer and that always mitigates the issue of power cuts. That is it from my end guys. I had an absolute blast with this machine and I really look forward to doing the projects that I have in mind, um, which will all be completely and fully done with this machine because well, it can. And I, I dread the day that I'm gonna have to send it back to the land of Pierogi and Zubrovka. I want to reiterate once again that Zmorph sent me this machine on loan for the purpose of this review and some other projects that I have in mind. No money has exchanged hands for this review. Each and every single thought that I mentioned in this review are my own based on my experience with the machine that was sent to me. That is it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, well, you can leave them in the comment section below. Make sure you like, you share, and most importantly, subscribe for more videos. Thank you to my awesome Patreons, and as always, happy making, guys.